Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So for this week's Sunday surprise, I've made this card here. Now I made this, I think it was the beginning of the week or the end of the week before, during one of my Facebook Lives. And it's using the hot air balloon images and the plane as well from the fabulous flight stamp set and I've made this little kind of wiper card so you just move these you can you can have as many as you want on here whatever it may be we were talking during the live you may have some flowers along here it could be like a flower bed or something and then maybe a bee flying you might have birds it could be a sports theme there could be like a maybe a football or any kind of sports with a ball I think that would work with this as well I mean there's loads of ideas lots of people were putting in some good suggestions in the chat but it's very straightforward to make so let me show you how so this is the stamp set that I've used. So this one came out as part of my very first collections. This one is a year old and it's still a favourite of mine. I do love the hot air balloon image and all of the sentiments here are really nice and some of them fit into the big flag or banner here that you can attach to the back of the, the plane there. So I've already gone and stamped and coloured these ones here. You can add pattern to them as well. So I've added some polka dots here because the, the stamp itself is just plain. So that's how it will stamp. But then you can see I've just added some more pattern there. And then I've got my plane and I've already stamped birthday fly by there. So that's all ready to attach. So I'm doing this rainbow theme so what you want to do first of all now i have gone and cut everything if you like to watch the live you want to watch me color the hot air balloons basically make that one from scratch then i'll link the facebook live below but i have gone ahead and got everything ready for today's video so i'm working within centimeters for this one purely because i wanted to get both of the circles cut from a piece of a4 I didn't really want to have to use 12 by 12 cardstock and this way I just think it's quite easy for you to adapt this and, and make it work for you but I just thought using the A4 cardstock you know obviously more people have probably got that as opposed to the 12 by 12. So I'm using my circle cutter here and I've just set it to the 15 centimeter marker there or if you want to do six inches if you'd rather work in inches that's fine I would then drop down every quarter of an inch you can also use your nested circle dies and you can draw around objects that you might have you may already have some form of a rainbow die as well you might want to just cut lots of strips using your nesting dies nest them all together tape them down and run it through in different colors and then you'll have all the strips and you kind of paper piece it together I've actually just die cut all these different circles and then I'm gonna you can actually make two cards as well so I've set it to 15 and I've die cut one two and then I've got this one here as well which I've already cut in half so you want three circles in white that are 15 centimeters you then also want to cut a red one at the same size because that's going to be the first color of our rainbow I then dropped it down for me to 14 centimeters like so and then I've cut the orange and then I've dropped down again to 13 for the yellow then 12 for the green 11 for the blue and then 10 for the purple so I've cut all those circles like I said if you've got nested circle dies just run through each different size you'll get the same effect okay so first of all so I've already cut that one in half so I'm going to cut another one in half and I'm sticking these together purely because it's just going to make them stronger so just cut your circle in half and you'll see there they stick perfectly together and again with that one there if you're happy with the weight of your cardstock then just keep it as it is but I'm going to stick these now together okay so that's the two halves stuck down this one's actually going to be for the clouds that's why I've got that spare now I'm going to cut all these in half but I'm thinking it might be easier to stick them all down first so you just want to stick each one so you've got a nice border and that way you know that when you cut it in half they're all going to be equal and lined up if you're worried that you won't be able to cut through all of this then I do cut them all separately and then stick them down but I'm going to stick that all together and then I'm going to run it through my guillotine or rotary cutter and that will just slice through that quite nicely so I'm going to get that all stuck down so that's all stuck down and I've also cut it in half so that's now ready to make another card then I'm going to now attach this onto the front of one of those white halves. So again, it's very thick, it's very strong. You don't have to add all the layers. And like I said, if you've run this through using your nesting dies, then these will just be, it will be different coloured rings and you'll literally just piece them all back down onto the solid white piece, for example. So whatever way works best for you. And then just stick it down onto this piece here 
Okay, then I'm going to cut in half. So whilst that's all drying, I'm going to cut this one in half, which is that last semicircle. And I'm going to cut my cloud. Now, the reason I've done it this way is because I wanted to make sure that I get the same kind of curved effect there from the cloud. So I'm going to cut that one like so, and then this one here and then i'm going to die cut another little bit just to go in the middle there during the live i actually left this one out but there was just too much purple for me so i've added that one in since so i'm just going to run these through okay so now i've got one to go on that side and then one to go on that side and then i've also just die cut just a random piece there and i'm now going to just cut this one right down and that's going to just hide behind there like so it just takes away some of that purple like so and then I'm going to have the plane it's going to go along the bottom there so what I would suggest you do because I'm actually going to connect the brad so if you see on the back here oh I didn't even show the back I don't think so it does all stand up you've got to stand there and it folds flat but I've since thought that you can hide this inside, which is what I'm going to do. And then we're going to flip it and actually have this. The outside is going to be inside and then the split pin is going to be outside with this over the top. So it's actually going to be completely hidden. So what I would suggest is just I like to pop these on some foam. And then that way, if you want to, you can add things behind. So say you're maybe doing more of a, a garden theme or something. You might have flowers. You can kind of, um, you know, slot things behind. So I'm only going to put the foam along the bottom on this one here. Because one of the hot air balloons are probably just slot behind the clouds. So it looks like it's just kind of lifting. It's just kind of coming up from the clouds. So... I'm just going to just follow the shape that you've got. And then with this one, I just need to put some foam along this part here. And then I'm going to pop glue just along this bit here. So, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you might have grass here and you're layering up the grass. Okay, but this one I'm actually going to stick right down. Then I think I'm going to have this one and this one up in the air. And then I'm going to have this one just kind of hidden behind the cloud a little bit. Or maybe there because I've got to have my plane. Actually, no, because there's too much blue. So we'll swap that one. I have the green down here instead. These are all going to move around anyway, but I think that looks quite good. So first of all, I'm just going to attach it behind the plane. I'll get some foam on the back of this one and I'm going to pop it just behind that cloud a little bit. Like so. So just pop that to one side. Next, you want to make the stands. This is a piece of seven by two and three quarters. Along the seven inch side, you want to score at two and a quarter, four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. Then you want to do a mountain fold, a valley fold, a mountain fold, and a valley fold. So you've got your two large pieces there. That's where the mountain fold is. Then you go into a valley, mountain valley. You can see then when we stick that together, we're going to get our stand. So I'm just going to run some glue along this piece here. I'm just kind of concertina fold it so it goes flat and you can just really push down and make sure that's secure. So I've made this one bigger. So it means it's going to cover, that's the front piece. It'd be this piece here, which is the back. It's going to cover more of this and this is your space to write your message so I would do another little mat layer on here or if you do want to write your message maybe write it now before you stick it down next I want to punch a hole in the back piece here and I came up I think it was two inches 
So you just want to find the centre. So bearing in mind, this was 15, so it'd be seven and a half. This is going to be inside, so you won't see any of these markings. So there's just find the middle point. So whether yours is six inches or whatever. And then I just came up. Two inches is about five centimetres. So, okay. In fact, I'm going to come up one and a half. I think that's maybe what I did. I think it was one and a half because that's more of the centre point there. Okay, just mark roughly in the middle. And then I'm just going to punch a hole through that one. Like so. I've then got these two strips of acetate, which are just over half an inch. Um, by, again, it's up to you how tall you do this really. Five inches. I am going to trim this and obviously you want it to fit in your envelope. But I'm just putting the two together there and just putting a hole through like so and then I'm going to grab Brad you're not going to see any of this so don't worry about the colour or anything but what you want is you want this is actually going to be the back of the card with this over this is going to be stuck over this so grab your two pieces of acetate pop them through the brad pop the brad through the hole and then open this up okay we're then going to put a foam in here and that's going to sandwich in there. And because this is now flat, you'll be able to just stick that over there. And it just means all the mechanics are hidden. So just make sure that these can move quite nicely. Now you need to decide how much of this you want to cover in foam, really, how, how much of a, a movement you want on top. So if you look in here, you can see my foam comes up quite high, but they can still move. You know, it looks like they've got quite a lot of space, but actually it's not too much of an opening there. So I'm going to follow that one. And I reckon it's probably about there. And that one about there. So if I just measure, it's about two and a half across. OK, but then just make sure you kind of come down following that same angle. You know, it's like your car windscreen wipers. And then I'm just going to pop foam all in this section here. I really want to get these little squares used up. If you've got your tapes, then, you know, your, your longer rolls, then use that. But I do want to just, I've got so many of these little pads. I just want to get through them. Just make sure that nothing touches these bits here. Okay, so I've taken all the backings off and now I can just line this all up and just stick that down and now you can see they move quite nicely so this was intended to go in a six by six envelope and that one does fit in i actually did pop it in the envelope at the end of the live so what i would suggest is if you lay a ruler down um and you can see there so that's as high as i can go so i probably won't need to trim these actually because i'll just stick more of the hot air balloon onto but that's might have this one a little bit lower like so just so that all three of them are at a different height so i will trim this one and i'm going to pop some red tape on this one here if you whatever you're sticking on here you may want to cut two of them and then you can stick one on the back so the the acetate sandwiched in between i'm not too worried And then that one, I'm going to have slightly more angled as well, a little bit lower, like so. So now when they move and they can cross over each other, like so. I think they look really cool. I love this card. I'm definitely going to be doing more themes with this one. And then all that's left to do is to stick this down. So just make sure that that's obviously nice and flat. I'm just going to use my quick grab glue. So there are dies to cut the hot air balloon, so I'll probably just die cut two more and just stick them over the back there. But just line up your stand so it's in the middle. So you've got an equal amount here. And just push that down for a second. So there's the finished card. Really enjoyed these ones. I think it's a really nice, relatively easy kinetic card style. Just need to cut a few more there to stick on the back. You've got lots of room to write your message. All falls flat. If you have a lot of dimension on this, then use one of my box envelopes. They'll be popping up now. 
and uh, there's the other one there as well but what a really different kind of card style to give someone I think they look fab so I hope you've enjoyed this week's Sunday surprise tutorial as always I'll link everything in the description box below if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you haven't subscribed click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial and there'll be some other tutorials popping up now if you want to go and watch one of those next thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon